Okay, uh, let's start off by drawing another rectangle that represents the back wall. Except now, I want you guys to draw a rectangle of a certain dimension. Please make this rectangle four inches tall. And seven inches across. Here's my rectangle. Again, make it four inches up and seven inches across. Next step, find your horizon line. Again, put it somewhere near the middle of the room. Doesn't matter exactly where. <clears throat> Place your vanishing point and then draw the orthogonals that represent the floor and the ceiling. Okay, uh, now that we have our room, the next step is to build square tiles on the floor. In order to build square tiles, the first thing we need to do is measure out even increments along the bottom. So this is why I had you guys measure out seven inches along the bottom so you can measure out seven even increments. Make sure they're exactly even. And then once you have seven increments measured out, Line up your ruler with your vanishing point and draw a line from each one of those increments going out. Try to be exact, because in this case, any little inaccuracy is gonna really throw you off quite a bit. Okay, so we have seven even increments. The next step is to get our horizontal divisions. Now they have to be perfectly square, and any time you want to get perfectly square divisions, we need to take an additional step. So everyone pay very close attention. In order to get a square, I need to do this. Place a point at the edge of your paper, over here, and please label it measuring point. Or M. How is this measuring point used? Here's how. Line up your ruler with a measuring point and the nearest corner of the room. So the nearest corner to the measuring point. Line up your ruler and draw a diagonal all the way across the floor like this. Everywhere this diagonal intersects the orthogonals is your square horizontal division. So now, let's use our right angle. Be exact. And there's our first row of square tiles. Let's get our next one. Our next one. And 
and we can do one more here. Okay, so hopefully you can see that these tiles look <clears throat> pretty square. What's the point of doing this? Well, sometimes you actually need square tiles, but there's a more important reason. It allows us to set distances and thicknesses anywhere in the room. So, uh, the first step is to build the same grid on our back wall and our side walls. Let's start off with the back wall by measuring out even increments going up. <clears throat> Let's get our vertical lines first. And now let's get our horizontal lines. So now we have square tiles on the back wall. And now that we have increments on the corners, we can use them to get orthogonal lines on our right wall. orthogonal lines on our left wall. And now that we have our divisions here, we can draw vertical lines going up to create a grid on our right and left walls. Be precise. And I think I'll stop it there. So we've got four divisions this way. <clears throat> Let's get four divisions this way. Okay, now that we've got a grid on our back wall and our side walls, we can do stuff like this. For instance, uh, let's draw a door that is three tiles up. And two tiles across. Now we can place that door absolutely anywhere in the room. Let's say here, three tiles up. three tiles up, and two tiles across. So now we have a door of the same height, but not only the same height, the same width. This is something we had to estimate before when we were doing projection earlier on. Now we don't have to estimate. We know exactly how big the widths are. And that's not all. We can place this door on the floor as well. So for instance, this door would look like this. Three tiles long, two tiles wide, if it was on the floor. So we could take this door and turn it into a basement. This grid technique is used a lot in interior design. So when planning a room, quite often uh, interior designers will draw a grid where each each tile represents, let's say, a foot. And then, they working from a plan, they'll put couches in, they'll map out, uh, I don't know, what uh, kitchen islands look like in the middle of a kitchen, all that kind of stuff. This is really useful. Um, if you're doing a multi-figure composition, it also allows you to figure out that if I have a figure standing right here, let's say, 
that that same figure laying down will start here and end up right here. So this grid method has multiple applications. Uh, we're going to use it a lot. Uh, but uh, everyone remember the measuring point, how to use it, because we're going to continue using the measuring point not only to construct interiors, but also objects, cubes, cuboid shapes. It's going to become increasingly important.